Although the Grammy Awards is an occasion to celebrate, it's sad to reflect that only a handful of legendary recording studios remain. With Anthony Mason, we're off to a fabled survivor. Have you ever been to electric lady land? Electric Lady is the house that Hendrix built. Through a discreet doorway in Greenwich Village, you slip into what seems like a psychedelic spaceship, a musician's Shangri-La. It almost makes me wish for rain When everything begins to go my way On any given day, in its four studios, you could catch Lucius laying down a track the Black Keys' Dan Auerbach at work. If I had been God. Or in Studio A, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. I love this studio. I love the old hippy-dippy thing. Just going up and down the corridors is kind of an experience. And that room is a beautiful room, and it's got a proper piano in it. So it, it encourages you to still believe that you're a musician. Electric Lady was the first recording studio designed and built for an artist. Here we go, this is the most interesting one. So this is the original floor plan. John Storick was a young architect when he got a call in 1969. Do you want to do a club for Jimi Hendrix? Imagine I'm 22. The secret to the sound, Storick says, came from the unusually shaped ceiling. But I think that's the magic of the room. I now know why the ceiling is working. At 22, it was a guess. <laughs> Hendrix unveiled his studio with an opening night party in August 1970. Patti Smith was there. You saw him that night? Yes, I talked to him. He told me he was on his way to London. He told me all his hopes and dreams. I still harbor them. The next day, he left for England, where three weeks later, Jimi Hendrix would die of a drug overdose. He was 27. Very but his studio did not fall silent. In the 70s, Stevie Wonder would record three albums here. Led Zeppelin made parts of physical graffiti. David Bowie recorded Young Americans. Oh, she looks so And Patti Smith tracked her landmark debut, Horses. Though Hendrix barely got to use his dream studio, other musicians were drawn to its magic. Why did you come here? Because uh, D'Angelo said, we're going to visit Jimmy's house. And when Questlove produced D'Angelo's landmark voodoo album here in the late 90s, they became convinced that Jimmy the house cat was in fact Hendrix himself. There was a point where there was this, like this, this shrieking uh, feedback noise was happening. None of the engineers could find the source of it. The cat jumped on top of the speakers, walked over and pressed the button just muted that, that noise. <laughs> That's Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> but as the century turned and the internet began to erode the music business, Electric Lady lost its allure. In fact, um, there was a 10-month period where there was not a single session here. Lee Foster started as an intern at the studio in 2002. And I'm thinking, you know, this is going to be... Shangri-La, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is going to be amazing. And I walked in, and the very first thing that I remember about this place is that a ceiling tile had, had broken through, and someone had taken a white pizza box and shoved it in its place <laughs> as a replacement. Foster would work his way up to become general manager, determined not to let the Hendrix dream die. The history of this place meant something to you. Sure. And, and it felt like something worthy of thought and protection. Do something. 
So what did you do? I, I worked really, really hard. He spent nights in the studio to fix it up and offered free sessions to artists he admired, like Ryan Adams. Early one morning in 2006, it started to pay off. And he called me at 5 a.m. and, um, Haley, you know, Haley, it's, it's Ryan. And I was like, hey, man, remember you said I could do, have a free session? And I was like, cool, man, we'll call me this week and we'll, um, you know, we'll set you up. And I was like, no, I, like, I'm, I mean now. <laughs> he was outside. He was out, literally outside the building. And I said, Ryan, it's 5 a.m., but, you know, if, I'll come now if that's what you're asking me. I mean, like, I really need a place now. I have this song idea. How big a moment was that for you? Massive. It takes two, it used to take one. The artists were coming back. In recent months, Miley Cyrus and Mark Ronson recorded new work here. And Lady Gaga tracked her Grammy-nominated song, Shallow, at Electric Lady. It was like a Noah's Ark moment, do you know what I mean? It's like, I want to get, I want to get everybody here and get them safe, and, and we can all travel together. That's a great image. Yeah. I think that's what Jimmy wanted. Yeah. Because if you look around at all the paintings and, and you're in this vehicle that, you know, that, that he was sort of had in his head and it's like we're, you know, we're all traveling through space or whatever and it's, that's kind of beautiful, you know what I mean? Let's go somewhere else. Yeah. Let's all go together. Whoa!